Yes, it is. You got an ID on you? Let's go. Arrest me. No, I'm telling you just to... Actually, Arrest well, me. I'm not, because I'm not... A, this is this is a public street sign. Look at it. You're ridiculous. Okay, that's awesome. Okay. That'll work. Did you run your body cam? I, I am now, because I don't know how legit you are at the moment. It's okay. Special agent hat. Yep, we got it. Okay. You got that on body cam? I do, but I don't understand what the problem is with you meeting me at the office. Bro, they came out to you right now. Cops sometimes make questionable decisions and risk their entire careers. So in this video, we will look at these four cops who lost their cool and decided to take things too far. On October 27, 2020, a citizen journalist from Delaware was filming some content for a documentary about factory farming and its negative effects on society. He was at Amic Farms, owned by OSI Group, one of the largest privately held companies in the United States. Before filming, he noticed people walking on the dirt path and no one seemed to be bothered. He also checked the county's GIS maps to ensure that he was not on private property and that the dirt path led into the street. He knew what was wrong and what was right, so he stayed on the public easement and continued filming. But just moments later, Officer Lee of the Herlock Police Department arrived on the scene. Police are on scene. Here we go. Is he gonna block the road? What's up with it, man? Just getting some pictures. Yeah. I'm just working on a little news story. Huh? I'm just working on a little news story. News story? About the health and food industry and stuff, yeah. Okay. That's all. You work for a company or? No, nah, I'm just independent. Just okay. trying to get my own thing going. Okay. I always had someone call in saying you're spotting around with a camera, that's all. I'm sure. I'm surprised. No one even came out, so I'm surprised. Usually they'll come out and harass me for a little bit before they call you guys. Yeah. But they might, <laughs> they might, yeah, I don't know, so. Okay. All right. You're good, man. Notice that nobody asked him to leave before Officer Lee arrived. This will play a crucial role very soon. I'm not giving any ID today. No ID? Nah, you're good, man. All right. Appreciate it, man. What was your name? Officer Lee. Lee, thank you, sir. You have to stay safe. Don't get hit by the corner. That's why I try to wear this vest, man. It helps some a little bit. Officer Lee leaves the scene without any issues, allowing him to continue down the public easement, taking pictures. But after some time, Corporal Garvey arrives to assess the situation and ensure everything is in order. What, did Lee not do a good enough job? What's that? Did Lee already responded out here. He can't be on private property videotaping. What's that sticker say on it? Yeah, that's the Department of Transportation. Well, the, yeah, the state of Maryland put this here. Yeah, well, this here is private property. This Not where I'm standing, dude. Yes, it is. You got an ID on you? Let's go. Arrest me. No, I'm telling you just to... Actually, Arrest me. I'm not, because I'm not... A, this is this is a public street sign. Look at it. You're ridiculous. <laughs> Lee was perfect. Once again, by observing his location and then checking the GIS map, it is clear that the journalist is standing on public property. However... Corporal Garvey continues to assert that it is private property incorrectly. Perfect. You just ruined it for you guys. No. You just ruined it. Garvey, you have a badge number? Yeah, 0142. Why did you ruin it? You got an idea? Leave, I'm not giving it to you. No. I'm not trespassing. No. You're on private property, buddy. This is a street sign. Yeah. Well, we're not it's that. public property. They don't, I don't want to play it either. Arrest me. I'm asking you for your identification. Come on. I'm not going to resist you at all. I'm not giving it to you. I'll give it to you at the station. I want you to, do, I want you to take it all the way. You think you're a bully? Then let's take it all the way. I'm not a bully. I'm seeing what you're doing. You're on private property. I already told Lee what I was doing. Well, you told I'm you not on you. private property. I'm you need to go look at the map. Well, I'm telling you you're on private property. How do you know? This is the road. That's the land. That's private property. There's you know, this thing called an easement, right? Yeah. Because I don't have to walk in the street. I, and I can walk here. Yeah, That's why these signs are here. Yeah. What's that? A street sign. Uh-huh. They can't put their street signs on... Who, Amic Farms property. Okay. 
So this cannot be Amic Farms property because there is a Maryland sign here. Yeah. Come on, dude. Come I'm on, Garvey. Time, I'm not going to give it to you. I'll go. That's Sorry. fine. This is ridiculous, right. guys. You guys are a joke. Just a business card. That's me, brother. <laughs> Why are you going in my pockets? I haven't got anything on you said now. What do you... I just told you. A strap. Strap. That's it. That's a lens cap. That might be the lens cap. Is it circular? Phone. Oh, then a phone, yeah. So why are you making this difficult? You're making it difficult. Wow. Lee was perfect. I'm not trespassing. You're ridiculous. Okay. I'll go to jail for it because you're full of shit. <laughs> okay. This, there's no way that this is their property. It has a sticker on it because Maryland owns it. They don't stick it on other people's property. You need to call the, the plant manager out here and tell you that you're on his well, property. Well, bring get the property lines. Right. He's got no idea. How, why are you listening to them? You're the police. Yeah, I know. You don't know. I Clearly, do. you have no idea. The property. I'm not on their property. Uh, buddy. So you want me to stand in the street and get you a ticket for... Stand across the road. That's then. their property too then. That's a public road right there. That's a road. So is this. You're not on the road. You're on the grass. That's oh my property. God. You are ridiculous, Garvey. Right. You want me to go on the other side of the street? And I'm going to ask you one more time for your name. I'm not giving it. I'll move. You have a lawful order to give me your you name. You asked me to leave. I'm going to leave. I gave you a lawful order to give me your name. So what is your name? Oh my God. I guess I'm going to jail today. That's fine. At this point, he has agreed to walk across the road to where Corporal Garvey assumes the property is public. Instead of allowing him to comply with his own unlawful order, Corporal Garvey blocks his path and demands his ID. What is your name? I'm going to jail. It's fine. Let's go. I'm not giving it. I'm not trespassing. You can't arrest me for trespassing because I'm not trespassing. This is not their property. It's not whose property is it? It's, it's an easement. This is, it's county property, city property. It's city so property. I do know. I don't know if it's a county, maybe it looks like a county road sign to me, but that's the junction for the road up there. That's why there's light poles here. They don't own the electric company. Come on, Garvey, there's a public easement. It's probably 33 feet from the center line of the road or 18. One of those guys are you? Well, it's just facts. A sufficient right of way must be provided at most 25 feet from the center of an existing county road as per Dorchester County's design guidelines for streets and roads. The journalist was not on private property and was about 15 feet from the center line. It's important to remember, though, that no official Amic Farms representative has gotten in touch with him or requested that he leave. It's facts that there's an easement for people to walk down the street. It's facts. You're not in the street. You're I don't want to be in the road. street because I can get hit by a car in the street. The thing, That's why there's an easement. So I no don't property. get hit. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. There's an easement here. This is not their property. This is their property. What's your name? <sighs> I just want to go to jail, man. You want to go to jail? I guess, yeah, because this is just getting bad. Because there's no way. There's no way that this is their property. Yeah, it is their property. How do they own up to the street? There's a there's a gas line in the road. They yeah, own the gas house? line under the road? You own a house? Uh, what does it matter? Uh, you own a house? It doesn't matter. It doesn't? Not to me, no. no. This has nothing what to do with my house. Your property line. I do this everywhere. You do, yeah. I do this all over the place. Typically Delaware, like you've seen. Yeah. But the same laws apply. State to state, they apply? Well, easement laws, yeah. I mean, the, the feetage might be different, but I'm not even two feet off the road here. You were right up here when I seen you. I was standing right behind, in line with this piece of wood, right? I mean, I got it on video. I'm still videoing now. So am I. That's great. Yeah. So you want to really want it? You want to take me for trespassing now? If I wanted to take you for trespassing, I'd take you. I'm asking. So you then, what are you name. doing? So you're going to take me for failure to ID? Yeah. Well, what law am I breaking? Failure to obey a lawful order. I've given you. Told you to give me your name. Maryland is not a stop and ID state, Garvey. You have to accuse me of a crime. That's the Fourth Amendment, just well, flat out. One, you're trespassing. I'm not. You just said I'm not trespassing. No, I said I'm not locking you up right now for trespassing. Why? I just said to. This is ridiculous. Because I'm trying to be easy with you here. I don't want, I just want to take my pictures and go. I'm not trying to trespass. I'm not trying to do anything. Yeah, I'm, taking, I'm working on a news story. This is, you ever heard of free press? Yeah, I've heard of free press. Bang, thank you. That helps me out a lot if this gets ugly. That helps me out a lot. But that's not what your business card says. It does. It's investigative journalists. Journalism is press. And it does say on there, free press needs to stay free. You, you didn't, even, you didn't even read it. Well, let me leave. No, you're going to probably go through my pockets in a few minutes anyway, so... Right? Is that what we're going to, Garvey? Uh -huh. 
Huh? No, I'm sitting here trying to be nice with you and reason with you, but you want to be ignorant about it. Not I don't want to be ignorant. I want to have my rights respected. Uh, I'm you? out here. Huh? Now you are. You're I'm, trying to get my ID and violate my Fourth Amendment. I have every reason. I have a lawful reason to identify you. You're why? on property. I wasn't. Reason. I wasn't. Then let's go for trespassing. All right, we'll turn around. Oh my God, Garvey. So you going to give me your name now or not? Well, let's wait till we get in there. Let's see your supervisor says something I about this. You're the supervisor. I yeah, I guess I will then. Now, Corporal Garvey has taken him into custody. After being booked, he was released pretty quickly. Following his release, he returned to the location, but this time on the opposite side of the road, where Corporal Garvey suggested it was safe to be. He left without incident, and the department waited three months before filing charges for criminal trespassing and failure to obey a lawful order. The prosecutor immediately refused to prosecute the failure to obey the charge, but proceeded with the criminal trespassing charge. The journalist fought the case through trial, during which the GIS survey, which showed that he was standing in a public easement, was never considered. However, when Corporal Garvey was on the stand, he testified that no one from Amick Farms had asked to remove him or asked him personally. During the trial, the prosecutor attempted to paint the journalist as a police antagonist because of his YouTube channel. In the end, he was found not guilty because Sergeant Garvey, who had been promoted since the incident, had no authority to trespass him. The journalist has now filed a lawsuit for the violations he endured, which will be served to the defendants. Well, this was not the first time the police decided to take things too far, and this time it was an FBI officer. Before we proceed with the second case, please show some love by liking this video. When this FBI special agent arrived in the small town of Carabel from Panama City to look into claims of corruption in Franklin County, he called Sheriff Deputy Ralph Gordon to discuss a ticket he had given to a local businesswoman. When Deputy Gordon arrived, he activated his body cam and the FBI agent appeared to be telling the truth. Okay, that's awesome. Okay. That'll work. You run your body cam? I, I am now because I don't know how legit you are at the moment. It's okay. Special agent. Okay. You got that on body cam? I do, but I don't understand what the problem is with you meeting me at the office. I'll talk to the U.S. Attorney's Office about it. You can cut off the reporting device now. Okay. Well, I will when I leave the area, sir. Hey, TJ. This guy is uh, telling me to turn my body camera off and telling me he's going to contact other people to get with involved with this. Get his tag number real quick. It's gonna be LKS T57. The deputy was asked for a private conversation by Special Agent Alexis Hatton, who knew a lot about the deputy's background. The deputy declined and subsequently contacted his department to confirm Hatton's car. Alright, well he's he's leaving the area, but I guess, but it's a blue Ford fusion, Ford Taurus. So, he says he does not give out business cards. Yeah, I don't. I don't believe this. No, no there's something fishy with this right here. He's got a radio and he's got credentials. Uh, Franklin, thirty. Thirty-three. Go ahead. Yeah, he told me to turn my body camera off because he, he didn't want that running. And uh, so now he's, no, he's still here. He's looking at me. Franklin 33 at 4 to 28 Lincoln. Hatton gave his identification, but Deputy Gordon would not follow his orders. A few moments later, he received a report on the license plates of the vehicle, which completely changed the course of events. Kilo, Sierra, Tango, 57, she was played on 2015. Absolutely four, not. Four door, still now he's, Dark blue in color. now he's saying I'm trying to detain him. To I've never, I've never told you I was detaining you. That's on camera field. that you are staying he here willingly, sir. 30 of 20, 51, on that vehicle. Franklin, does that come back to any government agency? This is easy to come by. It just advises Advanced Wiring Company. Do you work for a doesn't wiring company? Further. It's a covert vehicle, sir. Okay. 
feel like I'm being detained. Am I being detained? Am I being detained? You're the one who called me here, sir. How yes. did you get my phone number? I can't get that information. I saying he can't tell me how he got my information. Hey, you are detained at this time, sir. 33 Franklin. I got one whiskey mic detained at this time. 17's on the way. Hey, I don't think this guy's legit, man. Okay. I've got my to be a federal agent. You do got is it on do I have permission to take it off? No, you don't have permission. Okay. Take it Just hang tight right here. I'm not cuffing you. I'm not cuffing you. But you're being very uncooperative with me. I, you asked me to come up here, you called my personal cell phone number. You do, you can't tell me how you got it. Your vehicle is coming back to a wiring company, not the it's FBI. A covert vehicle. Okay. You Dude, get would mad you at, like to see some registration? You get mad at me would because you, I turned my body like to, camera on. Would you like to see some registration? And you know a lot of stuff about me. Would you like to see the registration, sir? I, I don't really want anything from you at this point. My supervisor is on the way. Excellent. Do you have identification? I surely do. I showed it to him. Would I, you like to see it, sir? That's fine. You don't have to keep your hands up. I'm just trying I don't to figure want to out what's going on. out here. I don't want to be shot either. I'm going to call my office. Surprisingly, Gordon went over to detain Special Agent Hatton while they waited for the supervisors to arrive. The FBI agent was getting more and more enraged over this. Yes, sir. Jacksonville, this is Special Agent Hatton. 33 Franklin, just 43. This individual's saying his name is Special Agent Hatton out of Jacksonville from the FBI. keeps getting on his radio, but I do not hear any traffic coming back from the other end. Do you have a 27 you want me to run? I do hear something coming back now. That 28 is going to be his uh, 28 from earlier. Lima, Kilo, Sierra, Tango, 5-7. Jacksonville. He's saying that this is coming back to that because it's a covert vehicle. You have a DL on that subject? Do you have a driver's license on you, sir? He's refusing to give his 27 at this time, Franklin. If he's not giving you his 27, you're going to detain him. Just go ahead and and get it from him if he's got it on him. So you're forcing me to give you my driver's license? That's what my captain just just okay. asked me to get it from right. you. Right. We need to find out who he is. Yeah, there you go. So he can just be somebody who's trained the FBI. Absolutely, yes, sir. And something more to him. Supervisor to come speak to you. For a supervisor to come speak to you. LT, he provided credentials, but he's refusing to give any kind of business card or any kind of contact info with who he's affiliated with. They want a business card. I told him I don't give out business cards. I've seen a badge. I've seen an ID card. I haven't seen a badge. You have not seen. No, sir. Card? I haven't seen a badge. I've seen an ID card. I handed this to you. Did you grab it? Take it out of my hand. Do you not see a badge? I see a badge now. That's the first time I saw oh, the badge, Lord. sir. You don't need to be a deputy. I saw this. He kept opening this. 
When the supervisor did eventually show up a short while later, he decided to escalate the situation rather than try to find a solution. There's somebody talking back to him on that radio in there, but... Middle East Gregory? That's correct, yes. Despite being right, Special Agent Hatton was handcuffed and placed in the back of the police cruiser by the deputies who saw him as a threat. Hatton did not resist and complied with the officer's instructions inside the car. Hatton found himself in a desperate situation. Whiskey Mike got him in cuffs in the back of the car now. Twenty-six Franklin. If that federal agency calls back, let them know I gave them all the information I had. I had to take a phone call from another federal agency. So, phone. Here, I'll, I'll tell you two at the same time. I brought a so call your this partner. guy calls my personal cell phone mm -hmm. and goes, "Hey, I need to talk to you about some stuff go I got going on in Caribou today. I heard Be you, you working in the Caribou area today." I said, "Yes, sir." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I said, yes, sir, I'm working in Caribou. Hey, Coleman, if you grab that gun, we'll throw it. Bash the your truck. Was that wrong? Was it on him or in the car? It was on his right hip. He had a holster. The DA guy was asking me if he was claiming to be armed. He, he is. He's so, people now and he's going to call me back. So he goes, I said, where are you wanting to meet me at? And he goes, uh, he says, uh, I think it's the new substation. I said, the new, the new police department? He goes, yeah, one, you know, he wasn't real sure. I'm like, okay. So I went down there. Uh, he had just called me and like, hey, man, what's up? I said, I got to go meet this guy. He's investigating something. He's hollering. I can't see in there. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. All right. I'm turning it on right now. Open the door. I can't breathe. Sir, I can't open the door. You're being detained right now. 26 Franklin, 1065, serial number. Yellow Go ahead and I got the air on full blast, sir. 6 to question 5 Why did that gentleman's name you get detained? 
It ain't the heat. What's up? You haven't cooperated with anything with that. What the gentleman's name you got detained? It's going to be Alexis Hatton. Alexis Hatton. Absolutely, it ain't going off. Shortly after, Deputy Gordon got a call from his department revealing the truth and pointing out their inability and severe mistake. They just called back. Sure. Hey, he he is is go. Go. What's he doing here? He is legit. 1045. Uh, Who just called? Handcuff him now. Uh, Captain Webb just called. Who verified? Captain Webb. Who verified? Captain Webb. I don't know. 33 to 5. Could you advise me who verified that this person was legit? What's he doing? What's he? He called me here, Sheriff, and says he called my personal cell phone. And he goes, I don't know. He, he refuses to tell me. Uh, he said, I, I'm, I need to discuss some things uh, that's happened in the care belt. His name is Lawrence Lynn, and he's down in this area said, on an assignment. I said, okay. Even after learning what was really happening, the sheriff and the deputies refused to release him, leaving Mr. Hatton gasping for breath inside the crowded police cruiser. It took the deputies an additional few minutes to correct their error. Y'all can let him go. Let him go right this way. All right, sir. Call 911. Call. I need a medical attention right now. Unlock me. Call. Call 911. Call 911. We're, we're releasing you right no, now, call sir. Call 911 now. Call 911. I need 30 seconds. 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 Mr. Hatton quickly requested emergency medical services after feeling the effects of the heat inside the vehicle. The deputies also requested assistance, but it seemed to take forever for it to come, and in the meantime, the deputy's health was deteriorating. The way the deputies handled an FBI agent was extremely disappointing. It showed a lack of empathy on the part of law enforcement officials, as Special Agent Hatton needed help. But they also thought it was funny. No, it's an official. It's, I, don't, I just don't know what he's acting like this for because he's being so uncooperative with yeah, everybody. I, I assume, That's why I didn't I think he was going to come back goofy like that or not on file. But he's legit, but I don't understand why. What's y'all's unit? Uh, unit number? Rescue 3. Rescue 3. And where y'all going to, sir? TMH, yes, sir. TMH. Hatton was eventually taken to the hospital, where he was treated and cleared to go hours after the incident. The sheriff, A.J. Smith, met with several FBI agents and stated that the deputy was operating legally and that his suspicions were well-founded. He also stated that the agencies would collaborate much more effectively going forward. Cops appear to have a special talent for making issues out of nothing, such as this upcoming case. On May 15, 2023, 
Patrolwoman Clemens of the Logan Township Police Department stopped a man outside of his place of employment in Logan Township, New Jersey. As she was conducting the stop, another man approached and struck up a conversation with her. The exchange was captured on the body cameras of the other involved officers. Hello. How are you? I'm Mom. I'm Officer Clemens of Logan Township Police Department. Do you have your license, registration, insurance? My license number, I thought I brought okay. but I was I got my license. That's no problem. What should I get stuck for? Uh, so that plate cover on the back. So you can't have a tinted plate cover. The frame is fine, but the plate, it makes it difficult for the plate to see, so that is not allowed. Hello? I'm sorry, I'm gonna stop. Huh? I'm gonna stop. No, I know we work here. Yeah, I understand that. That's fine, but I'm gonna stop. If you could just go back over there, please. You know who this guy is? Yeah, I know who he is. What's his name? Oh, you gotta ask him. You don't know his name? I can't. I mean, I, I, I can't. Hey, hey. I can't hear you. Yeah, some dude just walked up to my stop and told me that he's going to uh, beat me up. The patrol woman, Clemens, called for assistance, claiming that the co-worker had threatened to beat her up. Although the body camera did not record the entire conversation, the last two words he said seemed to indicate that he was effed up. Patrol woman Clemens later reported that the co-worker had threatened to beat her up. Yeah, some dude just walked up to my stop and told me that he's going to uh, beat me up. Although the First Amendment typically forbids states from criminalizing speech, the First Amendment protects freedom of speech, but there are limits. According to the Supreme Court, one such limit is for true threats. True threats are serious statements where someone means to threaten violence against a specific person or group. In New Jersey, threatening to commit a violent crime to terrorize someone is a crime. It's also a crime to harass someone by threatening physical harm. Depending on what exactly the co-worker said to patrolwoman Clemens, he could be charged with either making a true threat or harassment. Oh, right, listen. Let me check on this. Uh, yeah, I'll check on this, and uh, when I come back, if you have your insurance, no problem. Thank you. Sir, you need to go back inside. Yeah, you need to go back inside. Let's go. I want to stop. I'm okay. The driver's being cooperative. I patched him, but uh, this now is kind of just lingering, yelling at me. All right, copy. Forty four, I'll be coming up on you in a second here. This guy looks like a man. Black male, red pants, navy blue hoodie, orange traffic vest. He is inside the gates at Lineage. Nerd. You guys are good. Good morning. I'm sorry. Could you go back over there? I want to stop. It'll be two seconds. I just came. I'm the supervisor. I just came to see. He works here. That's why. Yeah, I understand. I'll, and I'll be I'm clear with him in two seconds. And then I'm just asking you, is, is, is everything? Yeah, right? everything's fine, right, and I'll be clear in two seconds. Can I ask you what he stopped for? Yeah, he was stopped for the plate cover. That's it. Already? So I want to ask you. All right. You know, I'm not a problem. When patrolman Andy Kalisian gets there, he goes up to the co-worker and his boss. I'm on the I just came to check on my employee. That's it. Yeah, that's be, first she off, explained. No, first, yeah, first off, bad idea to walk up. And, no, I didn't walk. She wasn't talking about oh, me. Okay. She called about Yeah, what's, and what's, what's your deal, man? I want to stop. You, sure. Yeah, but you don't, need to be, you don't need to be flapping your gums at us. I got you. I live here. I got you. I'm going to speak to him. No, now, now, he's, now you're under arrest. Now you're under arrest. Now, now you're under arrest. Turn around. Turn around. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Turn around. Turn around. Don't resist, bro. Bro, they can't mock me up. I can do shit. Are you going to put them as tight as you can? I'm not going to. Let me explain to you, sir. You're under arrest for disorderly conduct. Put your bro over me at work, bro. I didn't do shit. I ain't break no rule. No law. Get off me. So I'm bringing my arm. Get my boss, yo. Just watch her back. Get my f***ing boss, bro. Pat, they arrested me for nothing, Pat. You know I just lost my daughter, bro. They arrested me for nothing. This isn't going to get you any better. Take that anger down. Have a seat. Please. 
Alright? I did it. Peyton, is this who approached you? Yeah, he told me that he was gonna f yeah. Okay. Alright, we're I'm gonna, uh, if, if someone. Someone just wants to gather their guys' yeah. info. Um, yeah, so his response to me, when I asked why he's flapping his gums to me while I was talking to your security officer, was, suck my <laughs> dick. Now he's under arrest for disorderly. You're not in New Jersey, using loud and offensive language in public can be considered disorderly conduct. But the co worker's speech, even though it was outdoors, was quiet, and he wasn't directing it at anyone in particular. According to the First Amendment, people have the right to express themselves even if they use profanity, as long as it's not likely to provoke violence. While some courts have ruled that swearing at police officers can be disorderly conduct in New Jersey, it's different. Courts there have said that swearing at a police officer isn't enough for disorderly conduct, so the co-worker probably can't be arrested just for what he said to Patrolman Kalisian. I'm not going to use that language. You got employees out over there. I was speaking to him as well. I'm not having that. Tell him why I said so, that to you, bro. He's gonna Tell him why I said that to you. Like, he's not going to jail or nothing. Correct. Actually, yeah. Well, he might. Yeah, he might be he now might. because of... We got terroristic threats on our yeah. officer, too. We got terroristic hey, threats, uh, uh, resisting nobody arrest. Can, bro. Uh, we have it. So, we have it. Nobody. And he just walked away. It's a bit different story. I was talking with your security guard. He was very polite, he was very polite and respectful. He advised me that he spoke with her already, understood what was going on, you know, obviously when a car stop, don't walk up on us because it makes us nervous. And now he's walking up to on her, threatening her. Yeah, threatening me, so. So. All right. Hey, sir. In the event he's not going to cooperate, <laughs> do we have all his information? Yeah, we got it. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're, it'll, it'll be easier, yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 Or whatever, get your camera stock. And I'm, I'm hoping my, my camera fell off, and I don't even know if it was on. It's on now because I hit it and I saw that it was off when it fell. But everyone's cameras, everyone's cameras are falling off. Minimum disorderly conduct, terroristic threats, and resistance. Got his thing. Got obstruction. Okay. She came to, okay. came to the car stop and was trying to pull Do her off. Do you need to call dudes. his uh, parole officer also? If he's still on parole. If he's still on pro, yes, if he's not, he said he did 15 years on, so I'm assuming. Following a discussion in which Patrolman Kalisian mutes his body camera, the officers decide to file charges against the colleague for obstruction and resisting in addition to making terrorist threats and engaging in disorderly conduct. In New Jersey, it's a crime to obstruct the police or resist arrest. Even if the arrest seems unfair, if the police are doing their job, you have to cooperate. If you try to stop them, you could be charged. So. Even if the co-worker's arrest wasn't fair if he resisted, he could still be in trouble. He's an awful world now. So we, he was here when I was talking to him, when, um, when I approached him and told him, video. when I approached him and told him, now you're under arrest, we went, we was like right here. Okay. 23 so yeah, it was, it was all right here. Okay. Yeah, she's 2517 from 2322. Do you have a car by any chance? I don't. I got a new officer. Oh, no, no, no. We'll just grab your info. I'm heading. I got a Peyton. Yeah. Okay, you want to head in with him? I just grab you. Um, yeah, we'll reach out to if we need anything else, but I, I appreciate it. No problem. Sorry for the uh, disturbance. You better now that you got some air going back there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on either. Yeah, well, uh, unfortunately, that's really not, none of your business. A lot of cops get hurt with guys just walking up on them. The Salem County jail records show that Mr. Cooper was taken to the Logan Township Police Department's crime log for processing. 
There, he was charged with making terroristic threats, obstructing the course of justice, resisting arrest, engaging in disorderly conduct, and harassing the officer. The co-worker's speech seems to have offended patrolman Keyshawn. However, officers need to have thick skin when dealing with the public. In this situation, it appears that patrolman Keyshawn reacted disproportionately, possibly because his ego was hurt. Although I believe Mr. Coworker was within his First Amendment rights to speak to patrolman Keyshawn, he got involved in a police investigation that didn't concern him. If you think these cops arrested the co-worker for nothing, then be prepared to witness this shocking case. Fourth case. The traffic police officer who was working at the time had a breakdown after a traffic incident in Waterbury, Connecticut, back in December 2022. At approximately noon, Officer James Hinkle was directing traffic at the intersection of Thomaston Avenue and Homer Street when a vehicle passed through the intersection due to a malfunctioning traffic light. After Hinkle signaled for the car to stop, the driver continued to drive, slamming the officer's hand inside the car before pulling off. Alpha 3, give me a The police officer kept shouting, claiming that she nearly ran him over. And then wave at me and still try to drive by. Run her, please, and make sure she's valid. A week before Christmas, I almost get ran over. I got two kids at home waiting for me to come home tonight. I'm very sorry. Sorry doesn't break it. You looked right at me and still decided to drive by me. No, you weren't. I was in the middle of the intersection. That's so I was out there for 25, 30 minutes. Like, 30, yeah. 30 minutes doing traffic and almost got ran over once. Yeah, Everybody else, no problem, no problem. <clears throat> Anytime you see flashing red and blue lights in the middle of the street, it means there's cops present. Which should I say? No, stop talking, stop talking. And it means you need to pay attention because there's going to be police officers out and about, okay? This bright yellow vest, it's very, very bright. It's neon yellow because it stands out, okay? I'm standing in the middle of the street telling you to stop. That means stop. I'm not waving hi, Merry Christmas. This means stop. Listen, this means stop, okay? When you see me do this and try to get your attention and stop you again, it doesn't mean wave back to me and keep driving by me. It doesn't mean that. I'm not waving Merry Christmas, keep driving. Stop, stop. I'm sorry. Then what were you doing in your I vehicle? I was paying attention to the cars in front of me. 
There were no cars in front of you. There were zero cars in front of you. You were the only vehicle traveling on that road for five to hundred feet. There were no vehicles in front of you. Okay. No, there okay. wasn't. Okay. Shortly after, another police car arrived, and a sergeant joined the scene. The sergeant instructed Officer Hinkle to calm down and stepped in between him and the woman. The woman, who chose to remain anonymous, was given a ticket at the scene, but the charges were later dropped. Following the incident, an internal affairs investigation was conducted to review Officer Hinkle's behavior. He was placed on administrative leave during the investigation, and on January 9th, after a thorough investigation, Officer Hinkle was fired from the force. Waterbury Police Chief Fernando Spagnolo explained that Officer Hinkle's termination resulted from the internal affairs investigation. He stated that Officer Hinkle's conduct during the encounter with a citizen was unacceptable and did not represent the values of the Waterbury Police Department. Chief Spagnolo mentioned that other officers in the department brought this incident to his attention. I haven't seen a case in my 30 years here that has undermined the public's trust more than this, the chief said. It really shakes you to the core. Chief Spagnolo also mentioned that he had spoken with the woman after her encounter with Officer Hinkle. She's been very cooperative. She came to the police station, visited my office, and told me she recognizes that almost everyone at the Waterbury police treated her with respect, he said. How much we had to drink tonight, sir? I'm not turning my camera off. Go ahead and step out, Montre. Yep, I just told you why. Three times. You want me to recap again? Officer, look, my hands is up. Yep, your hands are up, and now I'm asking you to step out of the car. Just turn around, place your hands in your back, you're under arrest. No, I'm not. You are under arrest. No, don't. You are under arrest. Don't resist, Brian. No. Come on. Come on. Okay, you're, stop. You're no. under, you're no. not gonna I'm not. I'm not resisting, but don't. Cops usually don't get arrested unless it's a complete last resort, but some cops are so corrupt and evil that there is no choice but to lock them up. Here are the three most corrupt cops you'll see on the internet. Starting with Captain James French, who was caught drinking and driving. An officer caught up with French's vehicle after it pulled into a private driveway on SW Grand Boulevard. What happened next was one of the most reckless examples of police corruption ever caught on camera. Content. On with Stay in your vehicle. Get back in your car. I'm Drunk? No, I'm a captain. Huh? I'm a, captain. a what? I'm a captain. A what? The big don't reach in your pocket. Get back in your car. 116 show me 106 on the Henry Lincoln Edward 497. Have a seat. I, I will. I'm not. You've been drinking the night. I just got a ride. You've been drinking the night, sir. I'm a captain on the police department. What police department? Oklahoma City. What division? Investigations. What are you doing pulling in here? My mom and I stay here. You been drinking? How much we had to drink tonight, sir? Please. Huh? I'm not turning my camera off. Okay. The captain begs the officer to turn off his camera, but he refuses and the investigation continues. This man is not only drunk, but completely stoned, to the point where he believes the camera cannot hear him whispering. Go ahead and step out of the vehicle. You gotta be kidding me. Yeah, we're not gonna get a return on it. How much we drink tonight, sir? I was at a poker game. Uh-huh. Because you were swerving all over me when you turn off the you didn't use your signal. I'm sorry. How much you drink at your poker game? Not much. Not much? Mm -hmm. How much is not much? I don't know. Beer? Liquor? Yeah. How Beer. many beers? Three or four. Three or four? How long ago was that? It's been going on a while. 
How long ago did you drink your last beer, sir? What time is it now? It's 0140. Midnight. You think you should drive it? No, but I came from four blocks. Your mom your mom lives here. I live here. You live here? Yes. Come over to the rear of your vehicle. Okay. You got any weapons or anything on you? I do not, sir. The captain was searched and instructed to stand in the open, where his sobriety and balance would be tested. Those must have been some strong beers because not only was he stumbling over his words, but also appeared to be swerving across both lanes on his way home. Turn around, I'm patch you down real quick. Go ahead. Do what you need to do. I promise you I'm not a problem. Okay. Can I shut my door? I'll shut it for you. Hang out there at the rear of your Chevy. Stand with your feet together, hands down by your side for me. Hands, hands down by your side, please. Look straight ahead, you see the tip of my pen, sir? I do. I want you to follow the tip of my pen without moving your head, okay? Don't move your head, sir. Come over here, it's a little bit more level. You having those shoes and need cause you for keeping your balance or anything? I don't think so. You don't think so? Okay. I'm going to demonstrate for you first. While I'm demonstrating, I want you to stand with your feet together, hands down by your side, just like this. All right, sir. What's your name? Matt French. Matt French. Mr. French, stand just like that for me. Okay. When I tell you to begin, when I tell you to begin, okay, I'm just going to demonstrate for you first. Right. I want you to pick a foot of your choosing. It doesn't matter if it's your left or your right foot. I'm from here. And I want you to lift it approximately six inches off the ground. And while you look at your toe, I want you to count by 1,000s. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, so on and so forth until I tell you to stop. At any point in time, you lose your balance or your foot touches the ground. Just go ahead and pick your foot back up and continue to count, okay? Do you understand these instructions I've explained to you, I Mr. Did. French? You may begin. 1,000. Sir, can, can off? I cannot, sir. Please. I know you're aware of our body cam policy. You know I cannot turn I, off this body I cam. I do, but I'd like to talk to you. I can't mm -hmm. do that, sir. Please. Please. I'd like to talk to you. One. Well, are you going to do the test or not? Will you please talk to me? I'll talk you, to you once we're you done. You can turn it off. You can turn it on. I can turn it off once I'm done with my investigation, sir. Okay. I'm asking you. I'm a captain on this police department. I understand that, sir. I get And that. I am a sergeant on this police officer, and I I've taken not, an oath to uphold the law. I, I don't not, show favoritism to anyone, regardless. I don't I, care if you're a gangbanger or the president of the United States. Sir, I'm not asking you for that. If I was to treat you differently than I was to treat, like, some south side loco or some pedo, How's that look on me? Okay, I'm not asking you for that. Because I wouldn't do that for any of them. Sergeant Skinner, please. They proceed with the third and final test, which consists of simply walking heel to toe for 10 steps. The captain begs the officer to turn off his camera and just talk, but he refuses, stating that he must treat everyone equally or risk losing his job and livelihood. This officer is displaying a remarkable level of integrity, which is regrettably uncommon in our society nowadays. Like so. And then you're gonna take nine heel to toe steps, counting each step out loud back the way you came until you get to nine. Do you understand these instructions I've explained to you, Mr. French? I believe so. All right, anytime you're ready, you may begin. One, two, three, four. One. Go ahead and turn around for me. Put your hands behind your back. Are you going to arrest me, sir? Yes, I am. Can I talk to you? Go ahead and put your hands behind your back, sir. Can we get the camera off now? 
Yeah, we'll turn the camera off now. Thank you. After concluding the investigation and placing him under arrest, the officer switches off his camera and brings the captain back to the police department. In addition to losing his job as Oklahoma police captain, he also received the standard DUI penalties, which probably included a small fine and a few months behind bars. It was shocking to know that French had been with the department for 32 years. According to a news report, Chief Wade Gorley of the Oklahoma City Police Department publicly commended the officer who made the arrest for his professional conduct. The officer faced repeated requests to turn off his body camera, but Chief Gorley emphasized that the officer acted appropriately. In Chief Gorley's own words, the officer did everything he was supposed to do and handled the situation very professionally. The chief of police seems to be suggesting that some people might criticize the officer's actions. He states that if those people believe Captain James acted irresponsibly, then they should wait until they see the actions of these two officers. This implies that the actions of the arresting officer were even more justified than Captain James's. But before we move on, please like the video. In July of 2018, Montre and his friend were stopped by the authorities. The stop began normally enough, but it soon turned into the ideal example of how corrupt police can manipulate someone into making a false confession. What's going on, guys? Not much. What's up? Is this your car? Well, it's a rental right now. My car's been shot. Okay. Did you did something break down? Yes, sir. Yeah, so you guys just came from over the park, right? Yeah, we're just hanging out. That's it? Well, this was... Is this your car? I just told you my car's in the shop, obviously. This is a rental. Okay. How do you start it? What do you mean? I just put my foot on the brake and I put it in drive and I... Okay. Drive, while it may seem innocent at first, asking driver Montre how he started the car effectively suggests that the police believe he stole it. If Montre had not been familiar with the car, he probably would not have remembered how to start it, and if he fumbled around a bit before remembering, it might suggest he was under the influence. But Montre held his composure and passed this first exam with ease. Disappointed, the police decide to escalate the situation by tricking Montre into turning over his belongings. So it's your car though? Did they give you a fob or something? My car, officer. Did they give you a key fob or something? Or? Yes, sir. Officer. Like what does it do? Does it you see this this lets you this that should let you know that it's in. Okay. Do you have any weapons on you or in the car? No, officer. Okay, can I be honest with you? It smells like marijuana in the car, and I can see shake on the ground. And your buddy's given me the your buddy's given me the idea that maybe he's got a gun. I'm, I'm, you know what I mean? Like that's what I think. How? I don't know. Just the, the way I mean, just the way you're holding yourself, man. Like that's why I'm. That's why we're nervous, man. That's it. The officer tricked Montre into handing over the keys, but he also decided to search the car without getting the owner's permission because he smelled marijuana. Both of these incidents, particularly the marijuana smell, are common reasons to search vehicles without getting the owner's permission. The officer works in a very suspicious manner because he takes the keys without even stating that he already decided to search the car and that he was trying to make Montre feel threatened or helpless, which is evident from the look on his face when the keys are taken from him. Go ahead and step out, Montre. Yep, I just told you why. Three times. Do you want me to recap again? Officer. Look, my hands is up. Yep, your hands are up, and now I'm asking you to step out of the car. I gave you my ID. You gave me your ID. Go run it. Yep, I don't want to, I'm not walking officer. away from this car. Officer, can I ask you why? Yep, because I just told you, step out of the car. If you don't want to go to jail, I would I would, I would would expect you to please listen. Right. I mean, I, I, I told you I'm a cop. Face the car when you step out. Face the car when you step out. Face the car when you step out. Don't flex, don't flex. I don't know what you're doing, man, but you need to knock that off. Stop pulling on your arms. What's going on, dude? Where are you trying to go? What are you doing, dude? Officer, I'm not doing nothing to you. Okay. Well, you're making me think something funny is going on, man. Come on, man. You're not under arrest. You're just, you're you just, just, you just, you're just like, me. you're like pulling away like you're gonna do something silly. And I don't want that. Officer. What? Nothing. I what? I'm, I'm not even. I'm not. I'm not even gonna. Okay. Well, you're not under arrest, man. 
we're just trying to figure out what's going on. Okay, sure. Okay, so slide over. I mean, your heart is thumping, dude. Like you're beating. Officer, don't, don't, please, don't. Don't what? Touch have a seat. Touch. Okay. Have a seat. I want to. I think that your buddy has okay. a gun, so I need you to step into the car. You think I my buddy in, has a gun? He's acting funny. Step in the car, please. Officer, if come you on. if you don't step in the car, you're going to jail for sure. This is obviously a serious event for Montre, but the cop is purposefully trying to be lighthearted and jovial about the whole thing, using words like funny and silly to seem condescending. He also mentions that Montre seems nervous and that his heart is beating quickly. Everything the cop has done and said thus far is textbook corruption. Another well-known observation that keeps coming up in these cases is that innocent bystanders like Montre will always feel uneasy or even angry in this circumstance. It's a simple observation for police to make in order to detain them and obtain probable cause, which is precisely what the cop did. Can you spread your feet just a little bit? All right, come back and stand with me, okay? You're not gonna run from me, are Things started to get really shady when the police kept the suspect in the back of their patrol car, even though the search turned up nothing illegal in the Montre's rental car. Officer, I don't, officer, that's just in there, okay? There was no gun, there was no weapon to harm you, officer. We didn't do anything wrong, we stopped at the stoplight. We pulled over when you pulled over. I did everything you asked me to, officer. You thought there was a weapon, there's no weapon, we wasn't doing anything wrong, officer. I'm not sure why you pulled me over. That's your rental, everything is fine. There is no breaking taillight or nothing, officer. I did nothing wrong with you. Okay. So like you and I know, I mean, let's 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 start over. Let's let's root with each other. Did I make anything up when I said the car smelled like marijuana? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because there is nobody is there smoking in the car. Is there marijuana shake on the floor of the car? Officer, that was cigarette ash, okay? There's no, you didn't find no marijuana. I did, I'm not charging you with marijuana. I, but here's, here's what, if, if you want me to, if you want me to be real with you, like, I want you to be real with me for a second. Like, did I make that up? You know what I mean? Did I, did I just, did I make it up? I believe so, officer. Okay, so you want me to just write you the ticket for the stuff that I had to write you tickets for? Uh, if you think that I'm lying, like, then we'll go to court and we'll, we'll talk about it then. Okay. Or do you want to just be real with me and I'll be real with you? Wow, officer. Right? Montre felt trapped by the cop's aggressive questioning. The officer seemed convinced he had done something wrong and wanted Montre to move on without trouble. When Montre didn't comply, the cop threatened to write a ticket and take him to court. Montre knew cops could use lies and tricks to get confessions. If Montre had admitted to anything, it could have been twisted against him. Fortunately, Montre stuck to his story and was eventually let go. Later, he sued the city and settled for $775,000 due to an unlawful traffic stop and search. The cop was taken off patrol duty, but wasn't fired, despite his behavior being caught on camera. What happens when a cop gets caught for drinking and driving? Let's look at the case of Lieutenant Brian Philippak of Washtenaw County, Michigan, was stopped on November 3, 2016, in Montmorency County after police received two reports of a truck that nearly struck multiple vehicles and repeatedly turned off the road. Can I see your license for the stretch proof in there? Okay, you got your ID? Department ID? And your driver's license. The reason why I'm stopping you is we got multiple reckless driving calls about you. Okay? And then when I'm following you, you're hitting the shoulder of the road. You been drinking? How many? Okay. What are you reaching in the back for? I seen you reaching in the back. You have an open container back there? Okay, you been drinking on the way here? 
Got your registration proof of insurance. Do you have a firearm on you? Okay. Do you got your pistol? Are you a corrections officer or a deputy? Lieutenant? Okay. Brian immediately admits to drinking shortly after the conversation begins. This is unusual behavior for someone who has been pulled over, but as we'll see, it appears that Brian thinks he can get away with it because of his title. Brian, I'm gonna have you step out of the car. I'm gonna do some field sobriety tests for you. Okay. Where are you going to camp? Huh? Where are you going to camp? Malky, Michigan. Where? Malky. Malky, Michigan? Where's that? Just around, it's Hillman right around the corner. Hillman. Hawks? Huh? No, past Hawks. I have no clue where that's at. Never heard of it. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask you to step out of the vehicle. <sighs> what would you like me to do? Uh, just let me go. I can't. I had multiple phone calls. You'd be in the same situation if I was in the vehicle in your county, correct? I've got multiple 911 calls about a reckless driver, plate and all matches, almost hitting vehicles. I get behind you. You're you hit the shoulder of the road twice. All right, just let me stay here. You can't. I'm going to ask you nicely to step out of this vehicle. To be clear, if body cams hadn't been executed a few years ago, Brian's actions could have been excused. However, that is precisely the purpose of body cams to record horrible incidents like the one that occurs. Brian, my hands are tied. If I let you go, I'm gonna lose my career over you. You don't think I wouldn't? No. This is Northern Michigan. We were a small department. Okay, I'm gonna ask you nicely to step out of the vehicle. You know I, I have my job to do, you know that. Yeah, I, I, I just want you to... And I understand your, your point, your position. Okay, I'm tr trying to be as cooperative and nice to you as I can. So, please step out of the vehicle for me. You know how this works. I know. Okay. So I'm asking you nicely. I know you are. Just let me go. I'm not, go I can't let you go. We are, are, we're way past that point. You know this. No, I don't. You're a lieutenant. You know how this works. Yeah, I do. You would tell one of your deputies if they called you right on the side of the road. No, and they I'll asked you what you to do. So, if one of your deputies is in the position as I am right now, calling you as a lieutenant. Lieutenant, this is what I got. What should I do? You're just going to say let him go? This point, yes. Why? Why? Just because. You're intoxicated. I know it. You both put alcohol in the vehicle that you're stashed in the back. I know it. You know it. I'm, I'm not losing my career over you. I, you don't have to. This will make me lose my career no, over you. Won't. So I'm going to ask you one more time. Step out of this vehicle nicely for me. Brian, we are way past. Can't. I can't. No, 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 no. If you let me stay here, I'll be good. No. I I, Brian, we've already went past that point. No, I you are, you, you are. I'm being nice to you. Though. No, no, no. no. Well, Any other know. person you would have drug out of this vehicle, correct? No. That's refusing to step out of this vehicle. No, not where, I'm at. where you work, Washington County will not do that. The fact remains that if the individual in question weren't a law enforcement officer, they would have dragged him out of the car five minutes ago. But since the person in question is a lieutenant, the situation is substantially more concerning, as the officer stated. Washington County will not do that. Okay, so I think I'm being decent, not yanking you out of this vehicle yet. I don't want to yank you out of this vehicle. No, just let me go. All right? I, I can't. We're done with that. No, 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 no. We can't. No. My bosses already know. That's, That's not fine. Step out of this vehicle right no, now. Just let me go. Be a good guy. I am being a good guy. Brian, out of this vehicle. I'm asking you nicely. 
I don't want to see anything worse happen. Okay? No, just let me go. I'll Brian. I will go sleep in the bushes. You know, the next thing, I'm going to go hands-on with you. No, and you're going to go to jail for R&O. No. You want that. No, I don't want that. Out of this vehicle right now. Brian continues to ask the police to let him go and won't get out of his car despite the numerous consequences his actions will have. Surprisingly, the officers continued trying to negotiate with him rather than using force to remove him. Come on. No, 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 no. I'm being very cooperative with you. Nice to you. No, you're not. Because My hands were... are tied. No, no, no. I, I cannot just, let I someone go, go drunk. And, and sleep it off. Like, That's all I ask. We're, we're way past that point. Brian. No, we're not. Yes, we are. No, we're not. I had multiple 911 calls. No, that's why I'm saying. I wasn't you wouldn't have stopped without me lighting you up. I stopped for you. You wouldn't have stopped. I if, stopped for you. Yes, you did. You wouldn't have, st if we, I didn't I get didn't behind know, you. How, how, oh my gosh. How would I, would, okay, just let You me, know intoxication. Just let, uh, just let me s s stop over and call it, okay? I can't. Do me a favor. I can't. Oh my God. I'm not losing my career over you. And I'm not losing my career either, so. So, you doing exactly what you're doing is not helping your no, career no, out. No, it's not. Well. <laughs> Brian continues to act in this way in spite of several warnings, but we can then unexpectedly hear Officer Zachary reminding him that even though they are police, they are still subject to the law, which at least demonstrates that not all officers are like Brian. Go over I can't. We're done. Out of this vehicle now. I'm, I'm getting done with you. What's your I'm name again? Deputy Morrison. Morrison. Zach Morrison. Just let me... I can't. Yes, you can. You think I want to do this? Arrest a fellow cop? Uh, yes, I think you do. Why? I don't know. Just I know this over. career. I know what you go through every day. No, just let me go over. Why do you think I want to arrest a cop? We're not above I the law. I don't know. Okay. I've had... We could talk forever. Yes, we can. But... So and we're at the point, Brian, you have to step out of this vehicle now. I, if I have to yank you out with this no, being our officer, me, you are going to go to jail for R&O. No, I'm not. Along with other charges. So just let me... I can't do that. You know that. Yes, you can. My boss is already aware of the situation. It's okay. Just let me go over. I'm not lo No. Out of this vehicle now. No. Just let me go over, buddy. I don't want to fight you. I'm not going to fight you're resisting already. No, I'm not. I just want you to let me go. I can't. Yes, you can. No. Yes, you can. You're getting recorded. That's fine. How can I just let you go, knowing you're intoxicated? No, I said I was going to go and just... Brian, it's not like it's a road mirror, too. You're... No, you're I'm smashed, just going to go rest, and, and I will be on my way. So. We can't. We're done Don't with that. Guys, come on. The fact that everything is being recorded, as the officers stated, is undoubtedly the primary reason they are acting appropriately. What's interesting is to observe how, upon being informed that Brian will be arrested, he quickly responds, no, I won't, believing that his title will suffice. Brian has already been charged with multiple crimes, and after 10 minutes, Officer Zachary has had enough and removes Brian from the car. Out. No. We just have to. Out. Brian, go. Come on. No, hold Brian, on, guys. Brian. One more time. Step out of the vehicle. No, Brian. one more time. Step okay. out We're of going the vehicle. to get a f taser. No, one step more out time. of the vehicle. Can we talk about it? Step out of the vehicle. 17, step it up. No. <laughs> Can we talk about it? No. Step out of the vehicle. <laughs> You're getting the taser. Back up. Taser right now if you don't get out. <laughs> Out! Right now! Go to the front of my car! Detective Morrison threatens to tase the lieutenant after he struggles in vain and steps out of the car. The lieutenant is seen stumbling and swaying, making it evident how drunk he is. He was searched and asked if he was going to take a sobriety test. Of course, dealing with an inebriated police officer is not an easy task. You got your firearm on you. No, I don't. Can I just pull off? No. Hey. You're going to do field sobriety tests for me. No, just let me pull Brian, off. we're done with this. Hold on. Talk to me. Yes or no? Are you doing field sobriety tests? All right. So if this was the other situation, what would you do? 
I'm in a horrible situation. I know. Just let me. If I, I was know. drunk in your position, and I'm you pulled me over, I I'd feel horrible. But I'm gonna. Re I'm not gonna resist. I didn't resist. We forcefully out to yeah, you I on this deal. Yeah, I was trying to make a deal. Okay. Just let me go. I will. Yes or no? Are you gonna do a field sobriety test for me? I just want to sleep it off. Are you gonna do a field sobriety test for me? Can we just sleep it off? No, we can't sleep it off. Are you gonna do a field sobriety test for me? It's a yes or a no question. It's not. Let's just sleep it off. No. Okay? Are you gonna I do will just Brian? Are you gonna do a field sobriety test? Yes or a no? Just let me. No. We're not doing this way. When asked again if he would be willing to take a sobriety test, Brian hasn't responded appropriately. Instead, he has said something that a police officer would never say in a circumstance like this. Yes or no? We're gonna do field sobriety. No, no, just let me. Oh I take that as a no. I'm on your side. You're on my side, then do the sobriety test. It's no, yes. I'm not on your side. If you're on my side, you let me just go. I'm doing my job, you know that. Yeah, and I'm doing my job too. Okay. Officer Zachary tells him right away that he's being placed under arrest because he won't take the sobriety tests. If you're not going to do field sobriety tests, turn around, place your hands in your back, you're under arrest. No, I'm not. You are under arrest. No, don't. You are don't. under arrest. Don't resist, Brian. Nope. Come on. Come on. Okay, you're, stop. You're, stop. Under, you're no, not going to. I'm not. I'm not resisting, but don't. Let's stop. You're Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Okay. We've talked. No. You're under arrest. No, Place your hands behind your back. No. Don't make it even worse. No, I'm not. Let's talk about it. Let's just... No. Stop. I don't want to put you on the ground. No. I don't, I don't want to make this either. worse. All right, I will just sleep it off. You're, you're... Dude, stop it right now. You know... Stop tensing up, man. Stop it. You are getting handcuffs on because you're fighting us the entire time. After refusing to take sobriety tests, Brian was handcuffed and taken into custody. While being led to the back of the officer's car, Brian revealed information that, if not handled carefully, would have involved almost everyone in that case. So, what do we got to talk about? Well, not much talking about. You know what happens. We're going to take you to the jail and ask for a data master. If you refuse that, we're going to get a search warrant for your blood. Take you to the hospital and get blood. All right, so let's make a deal. Okay? Oh. What kind of deal do you want to make? Uh, a cop to a cop? That's what the deal's about. A cop to a cop? Why are you putting me in that situation? Why are you putting me in that situation? I, I didn't drink. Know. Okay, that's fine. I didn't drive. Drunk. Okay. I got a lot going on in my life. And I said... We I all have a lot going on in our lives. Deputy Morrison wasn't going to let the extremely intoxicated lieutenant drag him down with him. For some reason, Brian had forgotten he was being recorded when he mentioned that they have a cop-to-cop -cop deal, something that has obviously been discussed previously between officers and is known about in their circle. You're going to sit back in my car? No, just... There's no no about it. You were sitting back in my car. Okay, no, step let's ba talk step about back. It. No, I'm not going to fight, but... Have a seat. No, let's talk about it. Have a seat. We've tried talking. You don't want to talk. You didn't want yeah, to talk. No, you don't want to so. talk. I said I would hang out on the side Have a seat. of the road. Ryan. And I would go to... <laughs> Have a seat. Just take a seat. No, 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 no. You... Come on. You're not... No. You're, any other person is going to get an R&O charge. You know this. I know. No. Have a seat. No. Hey, watch your head. Have a seat. Duck your head, please. No. Guys, let's talk about it, okay? I've tried. No, no, have we a have seat. not talked. Brian, have a seat. Brian continued arguing with the officers and refusing to follow their orders. Frustrated by his resistance, the officers had to use force to subdue him. In my car. In my car. Get in there. Crawl in. I don't care. You're sitting down. You're sitting down in my car. Let's talk about it, buddy. Sit down and we'll talk. No, we won't. Okay, okay. Then sit down and we won't talk regardless. In my car. No, stop, I'm not gonna fight. 
I guess grab a shoulder and start pulling them. Brian, please don't kick me. That's all I'm going to ask. <laughs> Bring your foot in and sit upright. Stay right here. No. Yes. Just what? Brian, don't. Stop. Why are you doing this to a, a fellow cop? Why are you doing this to a fellow cop? Why? Because I said I would go to the side of the road and sit. Put your foot back in. Right? Put your foot Did back in. Did I not agree to that? Foot back in, leg back in. Now, please. The situation with Brian turned serious. After what might have been a struggle, the officers managed to get him into the back seat of their patrol car. They then drove him to the sheriff's department for further processing. There, a breathalyzer test was administered, which revealed a blood alcohol content, BAC, of 0.27. This is a very high level of intoxication, three times the legal limit of 0.08. Being a police officer himself and a veteran of the force for 21 years, Brian's case became complicated. While facing an internal investigation, he was placed on unpaid administrative leave. This essentially means he was temporarily suspended from his duties without receiving his usual paycheck. The good news for Brian is that he wasn't completely fired. Instead, after the investigation, he was offered a chance to keep his job under certain conditions. He currently works in a support role within the department and his pay has been reduced. This outcome has led some to believe that he received lighter punishment because of his seniority and past service. YouTube algorithm thinks you will like this video the best. Watch and find out if it is right.